Discipline is not a word that we think very fondly of, especially with the kind of lifestyles that we have right now, with the kind of mindsets that we have right now. Discipline is a word that is usually associated with legalism or religious spirit by many Christians. But what does the Bible teach us about discipline? Can a Christian be called a Christian without spiritual disciplines? Keep listening as we talk more about this. Hello and welcome to my podcast. This is Arpana Saladi. Thank you so much for tuning in once again. Discipline is a word that sounds very difficult for us. But it's not a bad thing, right? We all know that it is not bad, but it is difficult. There is one army commander. He says, when it comes to discipline, Major Shelton R. Williamson, it has been proven time and again that discipline is the difference between winning and losing. Now, we see in our lives, if we need to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, recently I've written this in my post too, that discipline is not devoid of discipleship. If we need to be a disciple, discipline is a part of life. That is, doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. The same thing again and again. This is called discipline. Many of the Puritans and many of the preachers and theologians, they have written and said that spiritual disciplines are the means of grace for us to know God. They are like the gateways to the gospel. Of course, they are not the gospel itself, but spiritual disciplines are like wires that connect us to the powerhouse, which is the gospel. They have no power in themselves because people might say that, oh, that's legalism. Yes, of course, you are not believing in the discipline that you have, but you believe in the power that connects us. It's only when we exercise our spiritual walk with God and that needs a discipline. What am I talking about? In simple terms, reading your Bible at a set time every day, praying every day, fasting every day. You know, you can set a day aside and you can follow a regime. If everything needs to be consistent, you and I need goals. You and I need discipline. These might sound very simple and basic, but I am 100% sure that you accept with me that we fail at the first step. The people who just come to my mind when I think about discipline are the English Puritans. Who are the Puritans? Puritans are people who stood for the truth, who looked at the world through the lens of the scripture, who built their lives on the authority of the word of God. They sought to cultivate a biblical worldview by maintaining a very high view of the scripture, their dependence on God the Holy Spirit and a commitment to developing a spiritual life with holistic and working theology but this needed spiritual discipline or in their terms that was the means of grace these means of grace were understood as unforced rhythms through which god communicated himself they looked at them as the tools graciously which god has extended to assist every believer towards conversion growth and spiritual maturity, godliness and holiness. One of the Puritan, John Preston says, For know that the means without God is but as a pen without ink, a pipe without water, or a soldier without a sword. John Preston understood the Spirit's life-giving role for the means of grace and describes the result of engaging in these spiritual rhythms as water is carried from the wellhead unto the pipe and so from the pipe unto many places so the means are as pipes to carry grace into the soul it was very clear to the puritans that in order to live a christian life beginning with you know the pre-conversion experience and then growing in spiritual maturity while having an impact on our community our family the world we live in Spiritual disciplines were really, really essential. The Puritans were men and women of order. They were down to earth. They were prayerful. They were purposeful. They were practical. 
seeing life whole they integrated contemplation with action worship with work labor with rest love of god with love of neighbor personal with social identity the wide spectrum of relational responsibilities with each other and they did it so thoroughly they say in their writings we get to understand that because of their strict regimes which they followed in their spiritual lives they were able to live the lives that they lived we see later after the puritans people like george whitfield or jonathan edwards after the revival even charles spurgeon and all these other people we see that they look back at those men look back at the puritans their families their communities and the lifestyle they lived in and they always try to imitate how the puritans lived their lives now in our generation we do not have a set regime or set goals for anything in life but how is that going to be possible that we are going to grow in the knowledge and wisdom of god without spiritual disciplines because now anything we say that we need to follow this or we make rules for ourselves people come and water it down and say that oh you're being so legalistic you're being so rigid about it god doesn't work like that god understands your heart god looks at your heart and all these other comments which we receive from the community the christian community that we are living in but my conviction is the conviction that puritans had and all the other revivalists and all the other preachers and god servants whom i look up to is that without spiritual disciplines them not working as the means of grace we will not be able to grow in our spiritual lives we will remain as spiritual dwarfs because discipline is what leads us to health for example if we just take our body for example what do we do we do certain things every day over and over again have you been brushing your teeth yes of course like when since when since when have you been brushing your teeth from the time we remember that we were able to maybe we were 2 years old or 3 years old we take certain amount of sleep we eat food we do certain things over and over again now why do we do these we do these things because we know that they will help us survive not just physically but emotionally the same is true for spiritual disciplines these are simple habits and practices that help us to develop grow and strengthen our faith in Christ. There are things like prayer, Bible study like I told you already, meditation, fasting. Meditation, don't get me wrong, it's not the new age kind of meditation that I'm talking about. Fasting, confessions, solitude, solitary time spending with God, worship, celebrations. Now these things don't bring us salvation. Get me right. Please These things don't bring us salvation and they aren't recipe for God's approval to do anything instead they are what help us to develop a lasting faith a strong faith and a faith that is put into practice they don't have power in themselves but they will help us to develop and strengthen a faith that connects to the one who is powerful over all things and how does this strong faith happen does it just happen on its own no 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 do we just grow naturally like that in our physical body we don't right we need to do few things over and over again the same things till we die it's the same thing we don't naturally grow in our faith on our own it isn't something that will accidentally happen you receive some divine revelation from god and then you and me we are going to just change and going to witness no 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 we need spiritual disciplines now this might sound very irritating to the ears of the young people of this generation but this is what is missing and that is why we have ended up being biblically illiterate not because there is lack of the word of god not because there are no men of god whom we can look up to not because the spirit of god is not moving among his people no it is because we as a generation have no discipline in on ourselves and that is why forget about spiritual lives even in our physical lives we don't have a discipline but if you and i do not have discipline 
we cannot be called disciples of Jesus Christ. I've seen many pastors and leaders. I've spent a day with them. I've been observing them usually because that's one thing that I love to do. That's my hobby, observing people. I've observed many pastors and many people who work in the ministry. I've observed them very closely. They only read their Bibles when they need to prepare their sermons. They only pray when they need to pray on the stage. And there are so many other things that leads to spiritual immaturity. Even in my life, when I was not saved, it's only the holy projection that I used to do when I'm among people or in the church. But I never used to have a spiritual discipline for myself in doing things. Let me give you four simple steps to help maintain a spiritual discipline. Start simple but make a commitment. This is very, very important. We can just start with one or two disciplines. Maybe reading your Bible every day or praying three times a week, fasting and praying or praying for you know a number of hours once you have developed this into a habit then you can increase the frequency and then you can begin to practice other disciplines now there are at least 12 disciplines that the puritans used to follow regularly but the best advice that i can give you is to start simple because we don't ask a one year old to run a marathon right <laughs> we start slowly and we celebrate each steps so it takes time to learn balance and become a natural walker and then it takes time to build good running habits and then slowly you keep improving and that is when you go on a marathon it's the same thing with our spiritual habits too i never used to read the bible like for maybe two chapters three chapters but slowly 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 as i kept doing it over and over again because remember god the holy spirit is always there to help us he is the one in fact who puts the desire in us to do to practice the spiritual disciplines because he is the one who draws us closer to christ and gives us a better clearer picture of christ and god and his love and redemptive work for us upon the cross number 2 find accountability we need to find accountability you cannot just tell yourself that okay i've made this rule and i will do it 99 times out of 100 i fail when i do not have an accountability partner so find accountability now if you don't have anybody if you don't have a friend you don't want to be accountable to anybody about your goals your spiritual disciplines i'm always there i'm your friend your sister in christ you can dm me anyways you don't see me personally so you can just text me if you are so insecure like me not willing to talk to people about anything so find an accountability partner because having someone to help you keep on track that will encourage you and that will push you towards your goal this can be really helpful Number 3 practice something new what is one discipline that you have never tried before think about it is it reading your bible or is it regularly worshiping or singing to god alone all by yourself or is it fasting or is it praying like for one hour or is it like i want to stay up all through the night and pray is there any spiritual discipline that you have never tried before before you make a judgment on the effectiveness or benefits of that particular spiritual discipline do a little bit of research and try it out you may find that god uses it in your life in a big way trying something new can be exciting thing so you can try a new spiritual discipline and that will help you lead closer to god number 4 make room by letting go of something because to have a proper discipline you need to let go of something and you need to say this is the time i'm allocating to do this so i will do this without fail because we just can't keep saying oh i'm so busy i just don't have time for something new this is a very easy thing to say but you and i know that it is just simply an excuse because we have a lot of different things going on in our lives but we should be able to find 10 to 15 minutes a day to start engaging in some simple spiritual discipline the best way to find this time is let go of something maybe you need to cut down your social media time maybe you need to stop watching tv so much maybe it's just getting a little bit of lesser sleep maybe you need to get up a little early 
whatever it might be just be honest make a commitment and try giving it up but remember christian spiritual disciplines are not about guilt because there was this time in my life that i was oh i am unable to read my bible i am unable to pray i am unable to do this and there was so much of guilt which was building in me and it brought so much of anxiety upon me and it led into some other effects but that's not what spiritual disciplines are meant for they are not about being a better christian they help us develop grow and strengthen our faith in christ you see the difference because any which ways we are clothed by the righteousness of christ himself but when we are his disciples when we are his friends we would want to know about him and these spiritual disciplines will draw us closer to christ and help us live lives which are holy and pleasing to god they endear us to our father they stretch and strengthen our faith and they are worth it dear christian how about giving them a try i hope you will thank you for listening to my podcast till now see you all next week take care and bye bye this is arpna saladi signing off <laughs>